We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We're gathered in this very special place, the shrine of Our Lady of Fatima, to be reminded of the type of heart we must have, a heart that we model ourselves after Mary, Mary who listened deeply to the word of God and pondered in her heart all the works of God. We pray that we may um, follow the example set by our Blessed Mother Mary, and we pray that we may have the faith uh, to sincerely pray, pray for peace in this world, pray for conversion of souls, pray for our own personal conversions, and we pray that um, the whole world may come to know our Lord Jesus Christ. So let us then pause for a moment to call to mind our sins, asking the Lord to grant us his mercy and to give us new life. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned through my in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison, Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. Father, you have given us the mother of your son to be our mother also. Grant that by obeying the appeals of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may always work through prayer and penance for the kingdom of Christ and attain eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, amen. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, as beautiful as a bride all dressed for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice cough from the throne. You see the city? Here God lives among men. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people, and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes, there will be no more death and no more mourning or sadness. The world, of, the world of the past has gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke. Now I am, now I am making the whole of creation new. This is the word of the Lord. You are the highest honor of our race. You are the highest honor of our race. May you be blessed, my daughter, by God most high, beyond all women on earth. 
and may the Lord God be blessed, the creator of heaven and earth. You are the highest honor of our race. The trust you have shown shall not pass from the memories of men, but shall ever remind them of the power of God. You are the highest honor of our race. God, grant you to be always held in honor and rewarded with blessings, since you did not consider your own life when our nation was brought to its knees. You are the highest honor of our race. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Holy Virgin Mary, and worthy of all praise. For the Son of Justice, Christ our God, was born of you. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. While Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breaths in which you nursed. He replied, rather, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Am I preaching or are you preaching? Oh, I'm preaching. Sorry. God is good all the time. I'm a little nervous, not because only public speaking is nerve-wracking, but I found out that they televise mass every day on television, so millions of people are watching me right now, so I better make sure I say the right things. While Eugene and I have known each other for many years, we were in the seminary together, there's many things in seminary theology that we learn, but unfortunately, I don't remember a lot of them. But I remember one particular teacher, Michael Downey, he taught a spiritual theology course, and every time in the beginning of the class, he would make us repeat these words. The main thing is to know the main thing and to keep the main thing the main thing. That's pretty catchy, huh? Why don't you guys repeat that with me? The main thing is to know the main thing and to keep the main thing the main thing. I thought it was a, brilliant, but he never really told us what the main thing was. Well, maybe reflect on what is the main thing? What is the main purpose of our life? And Jesus explains it quite clearly in today's gospel. A woman graciously says, blessed are the mother that carried you and the breast that you, that fed you in. And Jesus responds with something very surprising. Instead of giving her credit, he says, rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. You would think a good son would at least give their mom credit, you know? But he says, blessed are those who hear the word of God and observe it. At the heart of Jesus' message is what is the calling of every Christian disciple is to know the word of God and observe it. So let's reflect on what does that mean? Knowing the, hearing the word of God. Hearing the word of God means knowing the truth. It means not just conforming ourselves to the values of God's kingdom, but it's knowing in a personal way 
Jesus as Lord. One of the most daring, I think, most profound quotes from Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, when she said, the tragedy of Christianity is that people follow only a religious institution rather than a personal encounter with Jesus. A personal encounter with Jesus. So hearing the word of God implies we have to have this deep, abounding, intimate, dynamic relationship with Jesus that changes our whole life. Amen? And then he says, and observe it. Observing the will of God and doing the will of God requires a great amount of commitment. Wu Ray and Hannah, those of you who are not part of our group, they were just married a few days ago. Huh? They're newly married. And they're making this profound commitment to one another till death do they part. And commitment requires a deep decision to say yes to one another each and every day. When I think about the word decision, you know, when they say love is not a feeling, love is a decision. The word decision comes from two root Latin words. De Cesar. D means off, Cesar means cut. To de decide means to cut off all those things that keep us from following and doing and committing to what we have promised. And so to observe God's will requires that we observe and obey God even when it's uncomfortable, even when it's unpopular, even when people think we're not normal or nice, even when it's countercultural. Observing God is not easy. It requires a decision and commitment. And indeed, Jesus was not discrediting the Blessed Mother Mary as his biological mom. In fact, he was indirectly honoring her because Mary is the most perfect example of someone who heard the word of God and observed it. She is the perfect example of a human being because she had this union with Jesus, a personal encounter with Jesus, not just in a biological way, but in a spiritual way. And she observed it by following the will of God and saying yes to God's plan, even through times of struggle and times of suffering and times when she had to kneel and be there and pray for her son on the cross. Hearing the word of God and observing it. And it reminds us that the challenge for you and I each day is to indeed grow in our commitment to our Lord. We are here in this very place which our Blessed Mother gave that very urgent message to the world through these three very poor and humble shepherd children, St. Francisco, St. Jacinta, and St. Lucia. Excuse me, Sister Lucia. And the message was to the world to pray for conversion of souls, to repent and make reparations for sins and sacrifices for the errors of the world. And her message is still relevant for us today because today, this very day in the United States, we pray for the legal protection of the unborn. Today is the anniversary in which every year on January 22nd, commemorating Roe versus Wade in which the Supreme Court legalized abortion in our country. And this is one, if not the greatest evil atrocities and errors of injustice of humanity. It reminds me of a, a blessed, or excuse me, Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who during a address to about 3,000 Congress people, among them were President at the time Clinton, 
And she said these words that struck the very heart of the listeners. I'd like to read to you her quote here. She said, if I can find it, if we accept that a mother can kill even her own child, how can we tell other people not to kill each other? Any country that accepts abortion is not teaching its people to love, but to use any means such as violence to get what they want. Many people are very, very concerned with children in India, with the children in Africa, where quite a few die of hunger. These concerns are very good. But often these same people are not concerned and aware of the millions of innocent and defenseless children who are being killed by the deliberate decision of their own mothers. And this is what is the greatest destroyer of peace today, abortion, which brings people to such blindness. Such blindness. And she's speaking about the errors of a culture that denies the truth that the human child is truly a human being with all its dignity. Hiding behind the cultural narrative of women's reproductive rights. Not recognizing and being aware that this is truly a human child that deserves life. And so you and I today, in heat of our Blessed Mother, Our Lady of Fatima, today we pray ardently for an end to this injustice and evil in our world, in our country. And why should we pray and what should we pray for and make sacrifice and reparations for? We pray for the mothers with their unexpected pregnancies, realize that there's hope and that abortion is not the only solution. A child is not a problem to be rid of. We pray for fathers that they have the courage to care for their children and be responsible as fathers. We pray for family members and parents to support their children who have children children who are pregnant. We pray for clinics, doctors, physicians, that they might convert and see and be aware that this truly is a human child. We pray for all government leaders that they legalize protection of every child conceived in the womb. And we pray that we have the zeal and the boldness to be proactive against this evil. And so today, my dear brothers and sisters, let us pray in our session in consecration to the Immaculate Heart of our Blessed Mother Mary, our Lady Fatima, to the intercession of Saint Francisco, Jacinta, and Lucia, that we hear the word of God and obey it. And Jesus says he didn't promise us an easy journey, but he promised us a safe arrival in heaven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us rise to offer our prayerful intentions to our Holy Father. Here at this sacred spot where the most holy Virgin Mary appeared 
Let us present our prayers to God our Father, who gave us the mother of his son to be our mother. For all the faithful, that by obeying the appeals of Mary in a spirit of true penance and prayer, they may work wholeheartedly for the renewal of the world and for the kingdom of Jesus Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who exercise sacred ministry in the church, that they may be attentive to the word of God, love it, and proclaim it with fidelity and enthusiasm as Mary did. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who govern nations, that they may work for justice and peace in the world and harmoniously collaborate in the just distribution of earthly goods among all the inhabitants of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all those who suffer, that in union with Mary, consoler of the afflicted, in the loving care of others, and in the contemplation of the cross of Christ, they may find courage to face life. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the end to abortion, for an increase in the culture of life, both in the United States and all around the world, that more and more people will know the preciousness of life and protect it from conception to natural death. We pray to the Lord. God of infinite goodness, attentive to the supplication of your people and with the prayers of Mary, mother of your son, and mother of the church, to help us listen to our pleas and increase our faith. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your Son, in unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the vine, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and my sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we offer you these gifts of reparation and of praise, so that in celebrating this feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you may absolve us from our sins and guide our wavering hearts. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks as we celebrate the feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary and praise you for your gifts. She, receiving your word in her immaculate heart, merited to conceive him in her virginal womb, and in giving birth to the creator of the world, she prepared the birth of the church. She, in receiving at the foot of the cross the testament of divine charity, received all men as her children, born to eternal life, through the death of Christ. She, 
when the apostles were waiting the coming of the Holy Spirit, the promised one, united her supplications to the prayers of the disciples and thus became the model of the suppli suppliant church. She then finally elevated to the glory of heaven, surrounds with her maternal love the pilgrim church and lovingly directs their steps to the heavenly dwelling place until the glorious coming of the Lord. And so, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup, and again he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your, glories, your death and resurrection until you come again. In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread and this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity of the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, Antonio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, 
and graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us free from sin and protect us from all anxiety as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. 